in the last three years, independent Medicare sales, he's went from zero to $350,000 in commissions this year. This year. That's freaking amazing. Did you ever dream? Would you, you would be at a point in your life where you would go from zero to $350,000 a year in residual income. Boom, never. boom, boom. Never in my life did I ever dream I would make that kind of money. And going up every year. Absolutely. I mean, w w is there a better option in the world than selling Medicare in your opinion? Absolutely not. Today I got my good buddy Brian Thompson from Iowa. Man, I have been so excited to interview you today. We've gotten to know each other a lot this year, five months. Mm -hmm. You're, this dude is absolute animal, a monster, works as hard as anybody I know. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Dude, appreciate you being here. You, you, you have made a, you've made a big impact in my life just by being around you. I'm telling you guys, you get to spend time with this cat. Everything in your world will change. You will start making more money. You'll start thinking bigger. Uh, you'll start buying storage facilities and planes and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it was him all along. That's what it was. I didn't buy this stuff before I met you, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, you got an incredible story. You were cutting. You were cutting meat, making eight bucks an hour. Um, you, you you were even doing like group benefits back in the day, and then you, you then you've done um, PNC, mm -hmm. and you've done captive Medicare, right? And yeah. now, in in just in the last three years. Independent Medicare sales. He's went from zero to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in commissions this year. This year, that's freaking amazing. Did you ever dream? Would you, you would be at a point in your life where you would go from zero to three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in residual income? Boom, Never. boom, boom. Never in my life did I ever dream I would make that kind of money. And going up every year. Absolutely. I mean, w w is there a better option? in the world than selling Medicare, in your opinion? Absolutely not. We get a raise every year. We just got new commissions for uh, next right. year announced. Yep. That's and it awesome. went up another $34. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to start over every month and every year. No, right? absolutely like, not. I love life insurance as a part of the portfolio. Huge believer. But I felt like I was starting over. When you only sold just that, I feel like I'm starting over every day, every week, every month, every year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because At you're, midnight. You're, you're constantly looking for new sales. Yeah. Absolutely, though. That's the thing I love about the Medicare. Yeah, and it's it's the residual income. It's the yes. it's the relationships you build with these people. Mm. You know, through all through COVID last year, I'm, I I had some clients who wanted to see me again just because that's what that's what you do with Medicare. Yes, and through COVID, I'm in I'm in four or five houses a day, and yep. some of these clients that I've known for years are still giving me hugs just because we have that kind of a relationship. That's awesome. That's the cool thing about Medicare. Okay, you, you start building relationships, our relationships. You start, and then, then it turns into a lot of residual revenue and income. And then before you know it, you're making freaking rare dinosaur like freaking money, man. Like because it's it just it's not even it's just not like normal to make three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, right? And go up every year. Mm -hmm. Why you? Because you you weren't always the dude making the kind of money you are now, doing the kind of things you were, right? Like once you people hear your story. Because I, I've come from, I mean, I cut meat for 17 years. 17 years. 17, so, 17 years I cut meat. I, I worked at two different grocery stores. The last place I cut meat, I was actually working in a meat locker where we'd walk them in the back and push wow. them out the front. Wow. And I, you know, when, when they stand in that holding pen for a couple hours, they do what they do. And I'd, I'd have to go out there and clean it up. And I know how hard I will work now never to have to go back mm. to what I did then. Dang. So how do you go? Because I, I think a lot of people wonder this, right? Going from working in meat for 17 years. What sw switch flips? Wh where did the mindset come from to do what you're doing now after staying put? And in your opinion, probably being complacent for 17 years. Oh, absolutely. I was making $17 an hour. I thought I was on top of the world, <laughs> making 17 bucks an hour. It's crazy how we think and that. And I, uh, I was cutting by myself. I was putting six head of beef across a bandsaw every single day. Wow. And I had a day, I cut myself. 
mm. slipped and cut myself. It was the first time in 17 years that I cut myself and had to get stitches. And wrapped a towel around it and drove 20 miles to the emergency room. And I'm sitting in the emergency room, and I'm thinking, I know that I cut six head of beef today. Mm. And I can't remember running the bandsaw. I can't remember turning it on. I can't re- remember running it. Apparently, my head is not in what I'm doing. Wow. So I knew it was time to make a change while I was still able to count to 10. Yeah, for real. Do you ever think that today where you're like, I don't remember what I did today? Never. Yeah. Never. That's a big difference. No, if anything, I'm calling home with the the story of the day, who I was able to impact, who, yeah. how I was able to impact their lives or save them money or That's just amazing. change things for them completely. Yeah. That's huge. And so, like, so was it the decision of, oh my gosh, I just cut myself. I need to like really start to rethink my life and my career. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I tried a couple different things. And uh, what else did you try? Down, well, I uh, I worked for a a subcontractor for John Deere. Okay. For uh, about six months, they lost a big contract, and I got downsized there. Wow. I worked in a variable annuity call center Ooh. at the end of two thousand eight. Oh. When the market- That's about the hardest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Selling variable annuities over the phone at the end of 08. I was, I was oh. talking to people who had been on hold for three hours while the market is going down. And they want to call in and make a change in their annuity. And they were they were unhappy by the time they got on the phone with us. They weren't hanging up, though, were they? No, they weren't. <laughs> and so they uh, ended up Dang. laying off almost the entire call center there. And at the beginning of 2009, nobody's hiring. So I, I got a, I got a call. Yeah, I'm going to start selling yeah. insurance. Exactly. Is that is that is that why you're so good with people now? It's just because of what you've been through, all of your previous experiences. Absolutely. Because you're really, I can imagine you're really good at like de-escalating situations. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a matter of finding a way to relate to somebody. That's right. Um, you're, you're working a meat counter. You, you're talking to everybody from the bank president to the the lady that's only making six hundred dollars a month, yeah. and you have to be able to relate to all of them and, and help them all and treat them all the same. Yes, and be able to establish that rapport with anybody. Mm. Be it a, be it a farmer that's dropping off beef, or yep, or the lady that says, "Well, I, I bit on a bone and broke a tooth, and you need to help me out." Oh my gosh, I feel like everybody's got like this unique skill of like something they're just deep down really good at. Is it is yours the ability to relate and build rapport with anybody like? on the spot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's and that's what I love about the clients that I have. I've I've got those clients that make six hundred dollars a month and they yep. they're happy to see me and they and they feel like I relate with them. I've got mm. I've got a client who owns nine golf courses. Nine. Hey, nine. And he and I have a great time. That's freaking cool. <laughs> you play golf? Yeah. You ever play golf with him? No, we were supposed to play last year and COVID cool. shut us down and That's awesome. <clears throat> Dylan will be in for some golf. He's a big golf fan. <laughs> Um, okay, so, so it, yeah, it, it really is just the ability to sit. Yeah. I've I've done so many different things. I've dealt with so many different levels, be it from yep. business owners to farmers to to meat department customers. Yeah, I, I I'm able to speak with just about anybody. Is that also why you work so hard? Because you're like, dude, I don't want to go back. Is it like a fear of a fear of loss or like a fear of having to go absolutely. back? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I know what I'd never want to do it again. Yes. And how much. How much I want to succeed when I yep. when I left my job working for for a carrier mm-hmm. and opened this agency, I left with nothing. I didn't take yeah. any clients. I didn't take any residuals. I have no plan B. Mm. So this is going to work. That's super vital to talk about real quick too. Is a lot of people have a plan B. They don't have the previous experience that you have because we, I see I see it all the time and you see it like agents they they do not they won't work like you. They won't do whatever it takes. And it, it's not that you are like, because you're incredible, but it's not like you're this most special person in the world and that nobody can be like you, you no. know? No, I'll just outwork you. Yeah. Um, I, wow. I had a lot of agents I worked for when I, when I was working for a carrier, or worked with when I was working for a carrier, who said, dude, yeah, why are you working today? It's Sunday. Mm. Yeah, there's people that need to be helped, and we only have nine weeks of AEP to work. Especially during that time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, don't you want to watch, fo- watch football? Like, no. Not really. Yeah. I'd rather go help somebody. But you're glad you did now. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's going to keep taking off. <clears throat> I mean, at what point, how long do you think before you're doing a million bucks a year? Two years. 
Two years. You heard it here first. That's a 650K increase. Two years. And I really believe that that will be true too, as well, by the way, because you're a, you are a man on a mission. I love that you have a plan B. What, I mean, when you're looking for agents, because you're building out your team, right? Mm -hmm. You're looking for people, okay? So if you like this cat as much as I do, and you want to work with them, now that, I mean, they may, not, they may not have been made to keep up with you. Mm -hmm. However, do you believe you have the system and the steps to show anyone and to physically walk them through how to go from zero to 350K in under three years. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's There's insane. no doubt in my mind. That's the American dream. The only thing, when I'm, when I'm interviewing people, the only thing I tell them I cannot help them with is attitude and activity. Mm. If they will get out of bed and they will go to work, I can teach everything else. Wow. That's special. I love that you say that too. Because that's, uh, if you think about it, like, if they have attitude... And then we'll put forth the work and have activity. I mean, it doesn't really take a lot else. No, it doesn't. It just takes you them being coachable and listening and doing what you say. But it, but it takes somebody who's willing to go out and make five yeah. cold calls and get turned down every time and go knock on another door. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're doing some special stuff too, whether it be seminars or whether it be um, leads. I mean, you have a lot of ways to help people really get off the ground from a prospecting Absolutely. standpoint. Absolutely. Yeah. And they don't have to be in Iowa. No, absolutely not. I've, I've been recruiting Illinois... Florida, Texas, Oklahoma. Wow. So everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Fiji's next. Fiji. Okay. I don't think they got Medicare there. I'm gonna have to find another product. I don't know. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Health insurance of some sort, maybe, right? Uh, as you look back over your career, what do you think if you had to choose something other than hard work, what do you think's been the biggest difference maker in your career? The fact that I've I don't feel like I have to sell anything. I'm going and I'm helping people yes. make a decision. And you say that a lot too. And, I do. And, and you mean it. I do. And it's true. But I I represent every carrier. I represent yep. every product. If I'm selling in Missouri, Cody can't offer anything that I that I can't. That's right. The only reason not to work with me is because you don't like me. Yeah. Which has happened. Yeah. I don't understand it, but it has happened. So. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. That, that, would, that would be, uh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> happens to everybody. Right? There's does. plenty of people that, that don't love me for whatever reason, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's the thing too. Like, there's gonna be some people that watch this interview, and they're gonna be like, "I don't like Brian Thompson." There's gonna be others that watch the interview, they're, or, or Cody, and, they're, and some of the people are gonna be like, "Man, Brian Thompson is cool, man. He's impressive. He's down to earth. He's not 12. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> he gets it, okay? And he's been around the block, and he he understands how to help me get there." Absolutely. And I think finding someone that can be an experienced mentor like you is super vital and impressive. Um, what, what's your week look like? Like, what's your day-to-day -day look like? What's your activity look like? Uh, Monday, excuse me, Monday morning, we start every Monday morning with a, a team meeting. I love that. Uh, as many people as I can get into the office as possible and everybody else is able to access through Zoom. Nice. And we role play and we talk about any changes that have come up. We I start every meeting with roses and thorns. Cody, mm. what went well for you last week? I love What that. didn't work that we could help you with? Yeah. Because I've got something that goes wrong every week, something that I can do better, something I can improve on. Totally. If, if I ever come in and say all I had was roses, you need to check me in somewhere. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And especially with the activity level you put in, the thorns are going to happen. Absolutely. You know? or, or you didn't do anything, right? Like if there's no thorns, you're either like, off your game or mm -hmm. or you didn't or you're off your game right you know right right absolutely so uh mondays run the meeting and then I, I typically have agents who will hang around the office for the entire day and i'm just helping answer one question after another that's awesome tuesday through friday i'm running appointments or i'm going out with a new agent and helping them set up educational seminars or or events at a food pantry or whatever I can do. That's cool. Whatever I can do to help my people get off the ground. Yeah. Or I'm going to go out and make seven sales calls and take somebody with me and show them how I do what I do. Mm. The ride-alongs are important. Absolutely. Do you think there's a chance of someone coming to a ride-along, doing what you say and putting in the work and not making it? If they follow the process, if they put in the activity, they will make it. Yeah. The only reason they're not going to make it is because they quit. Mm. Or they didn't follow the process. Can't fail if you don't quit. I, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. A lot of people quit, though. A lot of people quit. That's 
Eight percent. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> At least ninety-two percent, right? If, if if people didn't quit, you wouldn't have a, a logo on your shirt. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. It was funny. Yeah, I got it on my wristband. I got it on my polo. I got it on my. I got it on my phone cap, uh, pop socket. Uh, I got it. I got. Oh, I don't have my. I don't have my brand socks on today. Never mind. I almost put them on. I thought I had them on. Forgot what socks you put on. That's when you know you got a lot of activity moving, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um. So what else? For, so for an activity standpoint, how many appointments would you say you typically run in a week? Yeah, I would say. This time of year, probably 20, 20 okay. to 25. But in AEP? AEP is six to seven a day, seven days a week. Wow. So literally like 40 to 50. Yeah. Minimum. Minimum. That's if I awesome. can, if I'm able to stack them where they're all coming in my office, I can do eight, 10, 12 in a day. Yeah. How, but, how, how long do you, do you, do you open up like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour? Like, cause those are just. Um, in my office, an hour. Yeah. If it's, if it's not in the office, I do it every two hours. Yep. But. You started to sell a lot more annuities this year too. I did. Yeah, I did. What 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 flipped? I For... came and saw you in Miami. To okay. be very honest, okay, it, it was just a mindset change. Wow. And that was, I was actually describing this earlier to one of your guys when I when I worked for the carrier. It was go in, sell Medicare, get up, move to the next. Go in, sell Medicare, get up, move to the next. Mm -hmm. There was never a thought of what is the next process, mm -hmm. what is the next uh, product, how else can I help this person? Yes. And in one way, it was really good because I got really, really good at working the Medicare. Yeah, you did. So I, I, I built the foundation. Now I'm able to go out and I'm seeing the extra opportunities and I'm seeing the extra ways that I'm able to help somebody. That's awesome. That's huge. I mean, it's a big piece. And, and you, you talked a lot about help. Um, I think a lot of, everybody needs somebody to help them. You know, whether it be a prospect, whether it be an agent, whether it be you watching right now, hanging out with me and BT. Uh, everybody needs help, man. Um, you seem like you care a lot about your prospects, your clients, and your people, right? Like your actual, your actual agents, people that you're helping in your life. And you're bringing on a lot of people too. Like this dude, I'm telling you, this dude is blowing up, okay? If you get a chance to just grab on his coattails and ride for the rest of the year, <laughs> you will make some money, okay? Just trust me on that. I don't know if he'll let you. That's not up to me, but if he lets you, I promise you, you want to, okay? Uh, where's the help come from? Why, why are you so focused on helping people? What, where's that come from? Because I, I've, I've figured out what to do to go to help people, and I can only help so many. Mm. And there are so many others out there that need good help. Yes. There are, there are, unfortunately, there are some agents out there who don't help as effectively as others. Yeah. They don't. It, it, okay, so explain that, because I know what you're referring to, right? <laughs> they, they just aren't willing to receive the help. They don't want the help. They're lazy. They're, in, in my mind, and a lot, a lot of what I see is agents that just chase commission. Yep. They're not. They're not trying to help the client. They're chasing a commission. Yep. And I tell my people every day, don't chase a commission. Help. Go out. I end every meeting with go help somebody. Yes. The commissions will follow. I keep, I keep a, I told you, I keep a sign on my credenza. It says, I saw that. Signed karma. Yep. That's what, um, that's what happens, man. You know? Um, if you do the right thing for enough people, the rest of it. it will come back to you. That's it. Which is, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, my father embodies that, you know? He just does good by people and good things happen. You know? He does. Yeah. My wife's always said that too, like, uh, good things happen to good people, you know? Bad things do too. Mm -hmm. However, tend to be more good. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Which but you, you can't just take, you have to give first. That's right. Uh, that, that's what I love about your dad. Thanks, hey, Brian, I'd, I'd love to use this. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Um, so what, what would you say is, if an agent wanted to like, reach out or they had a question or they needed some help or they do the, or they're like, man, I want to be free. I want to be Brian Thompson when I grow up. Uh, mm -hmm. What, what, what steps should they take? Give me a call. Okay. Let's talk. So you're okay with that? Absolutely. All right. How would they reach you? Uh, call my personal cell phone, 319-899-8222. Brian at Parisi Advisors, P-E-R-I-T-I-A-A-D-V-I-S-O-R-S.com. Boom. Give the phone number one more time. 319 899-8222. Yeah, that's awesome. There's been two people jump in, uh, Dylan, and actually give out their personal contact information, being willing to help somebody like that. Um, 
I'm actually getting goosebumps because I, I don't I don't hear that much, man. That's really that, that really is unique. my personal cell phone. If if I text Cody, that's the number that comes up. Yeah, let's see. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Um, and we we talk a lot, you know, because he's he's a good dude, friend of mine, um, mentor to many, and and cares about helping everybody. Uh, and so if you're out there and you're like, man, I need to change. I need a hand up instead of a hand out. And, and I really need someone to like propel me to the next level of me. Like if you want more, Stu's got what it takes. If you, if you want to hook your, your car to my train, I will pull you along. I love that. I actually just did a, uh, a demonstration in my office with some agents that needed a little, little more help. Yep. And I, I had everybody stand on a line. I had uh, everybody put your hand on the rope. Mm. I said, all right, I'm going to stand back here and I'm going to push on the rope. What happens? Nothing happens. Mm. I said, I'm going to pull on the rope and everybody come with me. That's good. That's a good demonstration. I've, I've been, some people I, I try to push and I finally had to learn you can only push so hard. You have to, you have to just turn around and do your thing. And yep. if, if they want to follow, they will. That's right. Because eventually, I mean, because if they don't want it, they'll start pushing back. Right? Absolutely. It'll become a game of tug of war there instead of them really wanting to move forward and progress in their career. Absolutely. Right? Which is huge. Um, I love that. Uh, what else would you like to add that, that you're able to bring and benefit an agent? I will work as hard to help you as you will work to help yourself. That's good. If you will go to work and help yourself, I will be there to help you. Yeah. I've got two agents that stand out in my mind that if I ask them to do something, they'll do something. Hmm. Um, if I ask them to, will you take this day and go out and help this brand new agent? They would in a heartbeat. Wow. That's and, huge. And they are also the ones that will go out and do the activity and do the training and do everything I'm asking them to do. And they're the ones that are showing the highest profit levels. Hmm. It's funny. I would say that's one of the things I look at the most. Attitude, but really... Are they coachable, right? When we hire salespeople, are they coachable? Absolutely. Will they listen? To, and and I mean, you, you spent some time here. What do you think of our salespeople? I love your salespeople. Yeah. They're great. He's probably trying to recruit them all. You know. But. Well, yeah, but Nick said no. So. Oh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> that away, Nick. That away, Nick. Dude. I, yeah. He'd be one heck of an insurance agent, though, wouldn't he? He would. Yeah. He would for sure. He's. Uh, yeah, we've got some special people. Nick's, Nick's got that giving heart too. He does. Yeah, he does. I've been, we've been very fortunate. Yeah, and that, that's what it's all about, though, is that culture, it starts at the top, right? It starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with really uh, helping people and, and, and building it up and building someone up over time. And, and that's one of the ways you've really helped me this year is let me, helped me get back to the culture that I wanted to be in. That's awesome. I'd, Thank you. I'd had some challenges the last couple of years building a team mm-hmm. and started to doubt myself. And that's that's where I've really benefited from coming to see you and coming to your workshops. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. That's awesome. Okay, that's awesome. Um, if when an agent reaches out to you and they're like, "Okay, what should I do next?" Say they're licensed. What's some of the initial things that you're most likely possibly going to recommend? Obviously, it varies depending on their situation and stuff. But um, make sure that they know their products. Yeah. Make sure they know their products. Make sure that they're they're committed because it's not a sprint. Yeah. It is a long-term game. That's right. And if, if you put the time in, you will get there. Yes, you will. But the only reason you, lose, you fail is because you quit. That's it. That's it. I love it, man. Thank you for sharing today. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for the friendship. And thank you for being willing to help some people along Absolutely. the way. Okay? Reach out to this dude. Give me a call. Brian Thompson. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. You've had, you've done over seven figures in six different industries. Yes. Okay. Um, also, while part-time, was earning, doing over 10K in premium every month.